Hey everyone, Ben here with a very special video. I've been lucky enough to get early access to the brand new F1 Manager 22 title, which means I've had a week of playing the game that puts you in the shoes of Christian Horner, Toto Wolff or Gunther Steiner to guide a real life F1 team to glory. I'm a sim racer who grew up on Grand Prix Manager 1 and 2, Grand Prix World and even EA's F1 Manager titles as well. I love the PC version of Motorsport Manager, so I've got loads of experience of this genre and can hopefully give you a decent steer on what the game is like and whether you're likely to enjoy it. And hey, if you're new to the channel, have a look around at some of my other videos when you're done with this one and consider subscribing if you like what you see. F1 Manager 22 is out very soon, but before you hit buy, here are the things I think you need to know based on my week of playtime with the pre-day one patch version of the game. Let's get into it. F1 Manager 22 is, to borrow a football cliche, a game of two halves. On the one hand, you've got the time between Grand Prix weekends, which is all about strengthening your team, managing resources, and plotting a path to upgrading your facilities and cars to compete at the very top. You'll need to make sure you're developing your current car, research technology for next season, scouting drivers, and upgrading your team headquarters. On the other hand, you've got the race weekends themselves, which are all about maximising the performance of the package you have today, responding to the conditions on track and executing the best race strategy possible. You can absolutely play these out at full length, or if you're pressed for time and confident in your team, you can speed the sessions up or simulate them entirely. What's for sure is that no two weekends are the same. Some circuits are harder on the tyres than others, the specific characteristics of your car will lend themselves to certain tracks, weather can change dynamically, AI cars will crash and retire, yellow flags and safety cars will be called. You can even see a race get red flagged and restarted. Picking your way through all of these variables and managing two separate cars is a pleasingly intense experience. Oh, and a huge shout out to the quality of the sound here. Music, voiceovers, radio clips, engine notes, and atmospheric sounds all get a thumbs up from me. And speaking of a thumbs up, if you're enjoying the video and finding it helpful, hitting the like button now will help other people find it too. Overall, these two elements go together well to form an enjoyable gameplay loop, where investment of time and good decision making in one area can ultimately lead to more success in the other. Although generally very good, on track the AI and race engine probably do need a few tweaks. I've seen some DRS trains form in slightly unrealistic ways. Cars can get regularly blocked in qualifying and make the odd poor decision as well in terms of getting quali laps in ahead of wet weather. And it's a bit of a shame that there isn't more of a connection between the two areas of the game at times, either in the form of press or social media readouts, or more guidance from race debriefs that might inform future decisions. But overall, the two core parts of F1 Manager 22 are fun and engaging. It all feels very authentic, and I'm looking forward to progressing my McLaren team up the grid. Or getting sacked trying. However, there's no getting away from it, playing and mastering F1 Manager 22 is a slow burn. Sure, you can hop straight in and take over from Horner and Bonotto and be fighting for the championship in Season 1, but development in the game is structured around researching, designing and manufacturing new parts for your car, investing in and upgrading facilities and scouting and developing new drivers. All of these things take time and are long-term endeavours. Just as in the real-life sport, the chances of going from the back of the grid to the front in one season are very limited, if not impossible. Of course, chances to be opportunistic do exist, for example by taking advantage of a safety car or of changing weather in a race, but improving the underlying fundamentals of your team and cars takes time. This is a title where satisfaction day to day is to be found in the small wins, the little signs of progress, the thrill of when you sneak a car into Q3 at the very last minute, or the buzz of dreaming up long term plans, like an engine switch from Ferrari to Mercedes for the future, the signing of a superstar driver to lead your team, or the expansion of your facilities to ensure that next year your car is a contender. 
To put this into context, so far I'm deep into the first season of my McLaren save where I've brought upgrades to the car and yet with the odd exception, we're generally running in the same position. That is right on the fringes of the points. If you're like me, this will all sound fantastic, especially when you add in technical regulation resets that can also mix up the grid order over many seasons. For others though, it might just sound a little bit like hard work. And speaking of hard work, even making baby steps of progress can be a stressful affair. So you want to develop a new part to improve the car. Brilliant, but you've got limited finances, limited testing time and limited engineer time. Sure, you could choose to allocate more engineers to the upgrade project, but those engineers then won't be working on something else. You could whack more money into the project to speed up delivery, but that's money you can't spend on other things and your engineers won't gain as much experience from the project as they would if you allowed them to take their time. Even worse, the design focus of a project towards aerodynamics might improve the impact that your new front wing has in slow speed corners, but it could negatively impact your brake cooling. This game is full of this sort of thing. It's not a mobile game style grind to the top where every new upgrade automatically makes your car level up and simply be better than it was before. You have to think about what kind of overall package you want to develop, how you manage trade-offs between different decisions, what kinds of circuit is your car best suited to, and do you want to double down on that or do you want to try and mitigate its weaknesses? This is a proper strategy game about making choices big and small. It's in-depth with few obviously right decisions, especially in the early game. Get ready to agonise over every call. Now much has been made of how good the game looks and for a management sim there's no doubt that that is true. Sure it can be a little bit rough around the edges and some of the animations are a little off now and again but to complain about those sorts of things in this kind of game is to fundamentally miss the point. I think the team have done a super job recreating the broadcast feel of an F1 race weekend. But don't be fooled, this game is really all about the data and that means spending a lot of time in menus processing a huge amount of information. Again, this is either going to sound great or like a bit of a chore. But assuming you're on board for this kind of experience, I think the design of the menus and presentation of that data all look and feel very polished. Everything feels official, the use of photography and graphics meld together very well, and I've been able to find almost everything I'd want to in terms of information, data comparisons and guidance. The in-game tutorial works pretty well to get you orientated first time around, and I definitely recommend turning it on and following the steps that it provides. It all makes for a very solid user experience in a highly complex game world. It's not perfect, but then neither is Football Manager, and that's a series that's been running for many, many years with annual iterations and improvements. So there you go, there are the things that I think you need to know based on my initial play of F1 Manager 22. I've really enjoyed my time with the game so far, and I'm looking forward to playing more. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more F1 Manager 22 on the channel and the kind of content you'd most enjoy. Or if you've got extra questions about the game, I'll try and answer them as best that I can. And in the meantime, I'll see you on the next one.